Good day. Welcome to King William Rules Everything. Today I want to take a look at wireless, specifically a firmware uh, for access points. It's kind of a third party. It's uh, DDWRT. Uh, and what it lets you do is take, say, like a Linksys or uh, Cisco or Netgear and replace the factory firmware with a firmware that has a lot more features. So basically what it does, it takes like a basic Linksys uh, router and adds stuff like workgroup bridge, adds, uh, you can find, you know, you can fine tune power levels, you can change a lot of stuff that uh, a lot of the, these don't have. It's just basically, you know, you turn it on, you, a couple settings and away you go. Uh, this lets you change power levels. So one nice thing about like the, the, the firmware for this guy, uh, a lot of them are like you know like 40 milliwatts something like that and this will let you crank it up to 250 milliwatts so you get some more power out of these guys because a lot of times what they're doing they'll buy the the, uh, the chipset uh, from Broadcom and then they'll do whatever they want to it and then lock it down but you can actually get get a lot more performance out of some of these guys by uh, putting this firmware on and like I said it gives you a lot more features uh, this guy is one of my favorite I've used these for quite a few years and this is even though it's an older uh, access point uh, New Egg sells tons of these guys, and the reason is because of the hack firmware. Uh, this is a, I think it says on the front, it says on the back, uh, WRT54GL. Uh, it only does G, doesn't do N or AC, anything like that, but what you'll get out of this guy is performance when you put this firmware on here, and it lets you do all kinds of neat features. Um, there are a lot of, lot of um, access points out that have this stuff built into it, but a lot of them don't, and so that's kind of where this comes in really handy. Uh, this guy here, this is a cheapo Linksys when uh, Cisco bought Linksys uh, wireless and nothing fancy. And by default, I don't know what this is, E, I can't see, I don't know what it was, E900, something like that. Oh, here it is, E900. But when uh, Cisco bought Linksys, you know, they've, they've sold them. Uh, they put their name on a lot of stuff. And this this was really a basic nothing fancy you, you boot up to its little web interface and you know you give it some settings and away you go <clears throat> so it didn't have a lot of features but by putting the firmware on this guy lock unlocked everything this is a wireless n uh, access point you see it's internal antennas and all that but before it sucked firmware lets you turn the power up do all kinds of neat stuff and like i said the, the firmware on these guys or at least the web interface after you put the firmware on here looks exactly the same except this one have n this one would not so I think what we're going to do is maybe we'll turn on we'll turn on one of these and take a look at it, and we'll see the web interface, some of the settings. I kind of want to show you you can do like workgroup bridging, uh, which is really neat because what you can do, say, uh, your wireless from your house doesn't reach your, reach your garage. Well, you can take this guy, not this guy. Uh, he has external antennas that come off. Put an antenna on your garage. This is a workgroup bridge, or even you can do as a repeater, and extend your wireless into an outbuilding like your garage. So that's what we do a lot of this, and also do a lot of uh, like campgrounds that want uh, you know they have, they provide wireless, but it doesn't reach some some areas. So you can make this a repeater, so you can just power this up some on a light pole out out in the field, and repeat the signal. Uh, repeating you'll you'll have your bandwidth, but it'll get signal where there's no signal. And like I said, this guy um, has internal antennas, so that kind of those kind of things you really can't do. You, you you can do some stuff. I mean you can do it, but without the external antennas you're kind of limited to what you can do so we'll turn one on uh, maybe this one and I'll kind of go through poke through some of the settings I'd like to show you some of the settings that I set uh, I set some of the, the the power levels and that's where you're gonna get some of the really good performance out of these guys at least the the, the distance and stuff um, and there's a few other little settings I like I like to tweak we won't go into super depth but I'll just kind of show you and I'll just put some links to the uh, website and that'll show you how to install the firmware. It's pretty simple. A lot of these, there's like a small version of it you, you put on here, and then you load the full version onto it. Some of you can just put like go put the download the full version and install it. Just depends on how you want to go. And and they have instructions for every model out there. They're all basically the same, just the way the way it gets installed. And some 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 access points just they they don't do it. Uh, the reason the the firmware is DDWRT is because it's originally like for the Linksys stuff. Because Linksys came out with uh, a Linux-based um, access point, and that's this guy. And they all look the same from this era, but some had the DDWRT GL, 
this is a GL, had Linux on it. So they took that firmware since it's open source. People, they hacked it, fixed it, added features to it. Where if you find some of the other ones that they don't have uh, the Linux software, you have to download a different firmware and then update the firmware. And there's, there's different versions of this. The GL still has uh, 16 mega RAM, where all the other uh, DD uh, WRTs had 8 meg. And there's like a, a certain revision, uh, but pretty much if you're buying a new one, uh, you want the GL. Uh, you know, you can still get some of these, but the, these are pretty much obsolete, uh, the commercial versions of it. And they have all different kind of versions now. And a lot of them, they still uh, put former, for, new firmwares out for these guys. But anyway, enough talking. Let's boot this fellow up, and we'll take a look at his web interface. So let's go to Mr. Router. 192.168.1.1. Uh, yours may be different. That's just what mine is. <clears throat> you can see it comes up with the screen. Uh, you can turn this off. By default, it'll come up. It'll ask you for a password. And it hasn't asked for the password yet, but you can kind of get some settings off of here without logging in. I uh, might not want people seeing that what this device is, so I usually turn that off. But this, is, this has been, been defaulted, so that's fine. So let's click on wireless and put in Mr. Password. Here we're at. <clears throat> so you can see you can change the mode, uh, AP, uh, client bridge, repeater. Those are kind of the ones I use. This is going to be an access point. But if you want to do like a worker bridge, you can do that. Or if you want to make a repeater, you can make a repeater. Just depends on what kind of mode you want. Uh, this is a N access point, so you can kind of pick what you want. Uh, BG, G, uh, NG mix is what I wanted. And I gave it an SSID called test. You can set the wireless channel. Do whatever you like, and if you want to be really naughty, you can see there's some uh, frequencies in here, 13 and 14. If you want to be uh, uh, above uh, the allowed frequencies in the United States, and you have an, a wireless card that can read that or hear that, you could do that. We're not going to do that today. Uh, broadcast SSD and sensitivity. If you want to change the uh, distance, to your essence, the distance a little bit, so you default to 2,000 meters. Sometimes you want to crank that up a little bit. But we don't need to do that today. Uh, so you can see there's some other settings for wireless security. We'll take a look at that really quick. And it's disabled. I don't have anything turned on. So if you want to do WPA, WPA2, radius, uh, whatever you like. Uh, this is just for testing, so we're just going to leave it off. You can do some Mac filtering. Advanced settings. This is really what I want to share, everybody. Uh, this is where the good stuff's at. And <clears throat> so you can set a couple cool things to basic rate. Uh, if you want to just set a low level, a default, I'm just going to say all, or default. Uh, MIMO, you can turn that on if you want to set, select the frequency for that. By default, it's auto. Uh, transmission fixed rate, if you want to set that, you can do whatever you like. It's auto, that's fine. These are all good. Uh, these I normally don't tinker with too much, uh, but if you look down a little closer here, uh, the transmit and receive antennas, if you want to change those, you can do auto or left, right, depending on how many antennas you have. This one just has the two. So we'll leave those auto, but you know, if you had uh, some uh, external antennas, you want to define which ones do which uh, feature, you can do that. Um, but here's the best part: transmit power. You can see default is 71. Uh, the range is 1 to 251 milliwatts. So if you want to crank this sucker up, and I usually do like 200, uh, 200 milliwatts, but you can do 251 if you want. They kind of think they recommend not doing that because they don't want to burn out the radio, but it does do that. And I've had some that have been running like that for years. And it works really well. And I use, like I said, always crank it up. Uh, just gives you that little, little extra distance. But <clears throat> you can see blue, Bluetooth coexistence. I don't play with that. Uh, you can schedule the radio. So if you don't want nobody uh, connecting during certain times of the day, certain hours. So if you got kids, you can turn it off at you know 10 o'clock at night. And a lot of other neat settings. And so let's apply them. And we'll go to the next setting, or the next tab. Oops. And so you can see the mag filter, you have a filter. Uh, the other thing I like to do uh, under administration. Come on, baby. I click it. So we'll go into status. So let's go into status. And you can kind of see, you get some uh, some nice information in here. Um, <clears throat> a 
the firmware version. This is from 2013. Some of the older ones, the older, older access points, they stop support them after a certain level, but you can see this one's still uh, somewhat current. Um, you see the Linux kernel 2.6.24, kind of an old one, but that's fine. And you get the CPU, you can see the CPU uh, memory available. And that's pretty much the basics of this stuff here. At least you can get some, some basic information what's going on. Um, the other kind of cool thing I like to look at, da, 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 let's see, you can do LAN, WAN, wireless. Uh, you can see radio's on, AP mode, NG fixed, NG mixed, uh, SSID. You can see it's doing 144 meg rate, uh, 250, 251 milliwatts, channel 11. So you can get some basic settings on here, so that's kind of cool. And if you see any kind of errors here, you'll see some errors and stuff. So that's kind of gives you some uh, troubleshooting. And, you know, you can see um, uh, people that are connected. Uh, bandwidth is a nice little feature that they put in. You won't see much data here because we're not on, on, online right now. But you can kind of see it's just a little chit-chat because I'm talking to it get through the web interface. But that's a really nice feature. Uh, you can do bandwidth monitoring. And you can do other, other cool things with this, this access point if you want to do some... Um, uh, multiple SSIDs and set up one SSID like a guest and you can limit the bandwidth say to one megabyte and that way the people on the guest one <coughs> uh, the people on the guest won't be overloading you know production network or say your network that way let's say like you have like a, a business and you just want uh, guest ex the guest uh, access and that'll let you just uh, limit those guys from doing a lot of big streaming and, and affecting uh, the workers but anyway, that's kind of the, the, the gist of it. Uh, here's some more uh, sysinfo stuff. And you'll see what's neat about here, you'll see the clients. So there's nobody connected wirelessly right now, but you'll see everybody that's listed. Here I am, a uh, DCP client, so you can see laptop. And this guy, <coughs> you can see he, he, block, he, he marks out the uh, MAC address so you kind of don't get information about him. But um, this is where you see if you got 20 people connected, you can see who's connected and what they're doing. But Anyway, it, this is a really nice um, uh, firmware, the DDWRT, and uh, if you're interested, you know, look it up, uh, the, the link's below, and if you want to uh, put it on your, your router, you know, feel free and give it a try. It's a little challenging, <coughs> but you get a lot of extra features. Like, so some some, some uh, routers do have these features, like, you know, Belkin, a lot of the Belkins have a lot of nice features like this stuff. But then there are a lot of routers that are pretty basic that don't have a lot of this. And that, that's where this kind of comes in handy. I know this was just kind of brief uh, uh, on wireless, but maybe we'll do like another video on quality of service, stuff like that, and do some bandwidth limiting with multiple SSIDs. Because uh, I can kind of see people might want to do that, in the, especially if you have a small business and you want to allow guest users but don't want to have them hogging all your network or people coming around mooching off, mooching off you and uh, doing bad things or YouTubing nonstop that affects you because you're paying for it but it's nice to offer that that to uh, customers so anyway that's uh, basically what we have for today I uh, hope you enjoy it and have a great day